To this point in the course, we've placed a big emphasis on using Newton's second law to predict motion. As we know, to do this, we typically need to specify how the motion starts out, the initial conditions, and we need to specify all the significant interactions that add up to give the net force on the system due to agents in the surroundings. There will be times, though, when we want to go the other way. Situations where we'll know the motion, but we'll want to determine something about the forces acting on our system. For cases like these, it will be helpful for us to use Newton's second law in a form where F net is isolated on one side of the equation. So, just to interpret, in motion cases that we'll study for the next several lectures, we'll typically have complete knowledge of the motion, which we'll obtain by watching the object move during some time period. We'll combine that with knowledge of the system mass, and that will tell us directly about the net force acting on our system. Sometimes the net force is what we're looking for, and sometimes we'll also be looking to solve for particular forces that contribute to the net force. So we'll also need to use models for different interactions that we've already developed. However, just to emphasize, here one or more of these interactions will be unknowns and we'll need to use knowledge of the motion to determine the unknown interactions. Let's mention here that this form for Newton's second law is called the derivative form because as delta t becomes sufficiently small, the ratio delta v over delta t becomes a good approximation to the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. Moreover, this derivative is often called the acceleration a. So the derivative form for Newton's second law, written in this way with the acceleration, is how Newton's second law is most popularly known. Let's illustrate all this with a specific example. Consider the case where we have an object of mass m that is suspended, motionless, by a string of negligible mass. What is the tension force exerted by the string on the object? Here we have a case where we know everything about the object's motion, but we don't know about one of the interactions. We can use Newton's second law to figure out this unknown interaction, the contact force of the string on the object. You may already know the answer, or you may not. Either way, we'll solve this problem using a set of key steps that we can apply to a wide variety of other, more complicated problems involving unknown interactions. As usual, we'll start with our fundamental principle, Newton's second law. To use this principle here, a key step we need to take is to identify explicitly our system. Here, the system is the hanging object. Now, for the next key step, we need to watch the motion of our system and use those observations to determine the total interactions. In this case, we observe the object starts with zero velocity and, as time passes, the velocity remains unchanged. From this, we immediately can say that delta v is zero. So, by just watching the system motion, we determine the left-hand side of Newton's second law is zero. And so, by Newton's second law, the right-hand side F net must also be zero. It's precisely here in this step where we connect observations of the motion to say something about the forces, most directly the net force. To go beyond this and solve for specific interactions, we need to employ the next key step. We need to use our knowledge of modeling interactions to state which forces exerted by agents in the surroundings add up to give the net force on our system. It's crucially important to name a specific agent for every interaction we include. Holding to this rule will keep us from falling into the trap of including forces that don't belong. If we can't name a specific agent for each force, then the force doesn't belong in our problem. A good way to assemble this list of forces and agents is to start with all agents that exert contact interactions with our system. These are easy to identify by looking at our system boundary. Every agent that can exert a contact force must cross this boundary to make physical contact with our system. In this example, there is only one agent that crosses the boundary, the string. So we identify here the tension force on our system is due to the string as the specific agent. 
We can then look for agents in the surroundings that can exert forces that don't require contact, action at a distance forces. In this course so far, we have only two possible candidates, either gravitational or electric forces. Here, we know that the Earth is the only agent that can exert an action at a distance force on our hanging object. In this case, the weight force which is the gravitational force on the object due to the Earth as the specific agent. We can represent all these interactions of the system with the surroundings in a compact sketch we will call a free body diagram. In this diagram we start with a dot to represent our system, then add in an arrow to represent each interaction. So we can include the only contact interaction, the tension force, which acts along the string away from the object, upward in this case. It's good practice to list the agent responsible for this interaction if there is space available. Next, we can draw an arrow to represent the only distance interaction, the weight, which acts downward. At this point, we can also specify a coordinate system, which we'll choose with the y-axis oriented vertically with positive y pointed upward. From this diagram, we can now write out explicitly what we know for our interactions, namely, for this coordinate system, we can write the weight force and the tension force in component form, where we see that our unknown that we're trying to find here is the non-zero y component of the tension force. We're now ready for our final key step, solving for unknown quantities. Let's collect what we know. We know from previous steps that F net is zero. And we know also that the only two interactions that add up to F net equals zero are the weight force and the tension force. So all these steps together tell us that the sum of the weight plus the tension force equals the zero vector. When we expand this in component form, we have the following expression. And from this, we can write out the Y component, which gives us this expression and from this, we can solve for the unknown y component of the tension force. In closing, we note here that this problem, where our system is motionless and therefore F net is zero, is an important class of motion cases where the system is said to be in static equilibrium. In our next lecture, we'll do a more complicated example of this, using again these key steps. Let's emphasize here that these steps for finding unknown forces will also work for more general cases, as we'll see later in the next several lectures.